Hello everyone, so I'm here today to do another of my Read Around the World project uh, videos and this time it's going to be the countries that were part of the former Yugoslavia kind of. Um, so that includes Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Kosovo, Serbia, Montenegro and North Macedonia. Um, so yeah, for Slovenia I read The Fig Tree by Goran Vojnovic. Um, I'm going to butcher a lot of these names, so I'm sorry in advance. Um, and I really like this. This is this was an intergenerational story of three generations uh, in the Balkans, uh, and they looked at uh, at the the time this turbulent time in the 20th century. Um, so the there is also a lot of uh, relationship uh, baggage in this book so the grandparents the grandfather left the grandmother father had ethnically serbian roots uh, so when the war broke uh, he decided to go to serbia and do something there and the mother is slovenian so she's uh, she's back and then in the third generation we have the the son that also struggles with being Slovenian and Serbian and all of these things and it, it has a lot of nuances in terms of um, the ethnicity in that region, the language you speak but also the religion uh, because a lot of people in this area are Muslims uh, as part of they were part of the Ottoman Empire so there is quite a lot of uh, Muslim culture as well that plays a role uh, and it's a bit about what is really more important, your beliefs, your ethnicity, your family, your close relationships, uh, your sense of home, how do all these things interplay and I think it was really well done and it had a lot of nuance in, into it. Um, so I was very happily, uh, I, I, I was very happy when I, I read this book because it was um, it was very interesting and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it was a good pick. Uh, for Croatia, I have Girl at War by Sara Novic. Um, I read this a while ago, but from my, what I remember, it was fine. Uh, again, a lot of these books deal with the um, the war in the 90s uh, because that's uh, very recent present and very violent, traumatic present in their common um in their common conscience so it's a lot of uh, in a lot of these books they, it deals with the the transition between being Yugoslavia to be in their own countries and this was as, also as well about that this one is a little bit more simple and more um, I think it's uh, young adult uh, so it's about uh, a girl that goes back to Croatia um, I, I remember correctly she grew up somewhere else and she goes back um, and like getting used to and in touch of uh, the people there and what they went through because she didn't went through all of these uh, violent acts um, and how much violence there was in the war um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was fine. Um, I think that it was not a bad book, but also it didn't... A lot of other books uh, that I'm going to talk about have had a lot more depth. I think partly it's because this one is, again, young adult, which doesn't mean that it's bad, but it's just... It tends to be less um, deep and nuanced um, than, than adult books. So that's something to take into account. So I would like to read maybe something else from Croatia that is a little bit more um, adult than this one. From Bosnia and Herzegovina, I have read two books that I have, both of them I have really enjoyed. The first one is Where You Come From by Sasa Stanisic. Um, and this one is uh, kind of a memoir, the, the author, like an auto fiction kind of thing. Um, and the author is from, uh, I think he grew up in Germany, but he was from Bosnia and Herzegovina originally, and his parents flee when, again when the war happened and he grew up in Germany but had a lot of connection with um, with Bosnia and he talks a lot about um, what it was to be away and how he was perceived when he was in Germany but also 
how that affected his his ethnicity and his uh, sense of identity. Uh, there was this one scene that I still remember very well. When he left, the country was Yugoslavia, so he considered himself a Yugoslav. And then when they left, uh, he had uh, some relation with other kids from from the area. And when in a class they were told to write um, their ethnicity next to their names and people said oh I'm Serb, I'm Croat, whatever and one of the kids wrote I'm a Yugoslav and then after that everyone else changed their name to be a Yugoslav as well like they don't didn't want this these divisions but these divisions are part of their culture and um, I thought that was very touching for me and very powerful the uh, the idea of how you identify yourself and how does that affect the bigger picture um, so yeah I enjoyed that one and the other one that I have read from Bosnia and Herzegovina is My Heart by Sebastian Mehmedinovic and uh, this was I, I love this book. It was part of the Booktop Prize that last uh, year and it was one of my favorites to win. It didn't even make it to the finals, but I thought it was really, really powerful. It's about an old man that moved from Bosnia to the US and he... So it's divided in three parts. And the first part, he talks about his relationship with his wife. The second part, with the relationship with his son. And then he also talks about the relationship with himself and his own heart. So he has had heart problems and how that affects his life. And it's it's kind of each section is is not only about these people, but it's also directed to them so especially the part about the son is written in second person singular like really talking about the son uh, to the son um, and I thought it was just so honest and so powerful the way it was written like the language sentence to sentence it was just so beautiful and so powerful um, it also had little illustrations that just made it a little bit more extra um, and I really really loved this book I think it was really well done and I wish more people read it then for Kosovo I read Boya by Patim Statovici. Um, again, these names are difficult. Um, but this one came out recently actually and it's technically the author is fi Finnish but his family came from Kosovo and he writes about Kosovo and there is nothing about Finland in this book so I think it counts <laughs> um, and this book is about uh, this man that is uh, homosexual in Kosovo and he's not very well accepted that that is a thing uh, but he's in love with a man um, and he has a family like he has a wife and then kids uh, because that's the social thing to do um, and at some point when the war breaks he has to live with his family and leave his, the love of his life behind um, and it's sort of what happens after that and what he develops, like how he develops in his life after having to live the love of his life for the socially acceptable thing to do and how he at some point tries to fight that and how that turns out. Um, it's a very sad book. It's uh, The main character is not likable at all. He's He makes very selfish choices that affect really badly not only on on the man he's in love with but also on his wife he he treats his wife really badly and his his uh, children i think that the fact that you have been forced by society to that doesn't mean that you have to be such a bad person to them <laughs> um but yeah it's uh so he's not a likable character um, you could, the, the thing that the book does is that you can understand where he's coming from, but that doesn't justify what he's doing. Um, so yeah, for me that was, I prefer to like the characters I follow, but I, it was not a completely 
I think that completely put me off of this book. I think it still um, was a good book and had its merits. And uh, it, it did pack a lot of things in a very short book. This book is less than 200 pages and it has a lot of um, nuance into the politics and the societal norms of Kosovo at that time. Um, and I thought it was very well done. It's just not personally connecting with me in, in the way that some other books did but uh, it's still a really good book. Then for Serbia I read The Cyclist Com Conspiracy by Svenislav Basara and this was a ride. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting about this but this was crazy. Um, so this is about um, like a secret society that started I think in 17 or 1600s maybe I'm, I'm wrong on that supposedly and it's supposed to be kind of like the Illuminati but it's like the evangelist cross of the cyclist something 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 like that it's it's like a very religious group that also are cyclists and they think that cycling is somehow superior but at the same time you don't have to cycle to be part of this you just have to own a bicycle um, to be part of this order and well you have to be invited and whatever and it's kind of like it's following several generations of these people and there is like a background again of of the history of the region but it's a lot less obvious in all of the other books that I have been mentioning it is really a big part it's the main thing that how um, war changed the life of all of these people but in this one it's like yeah background thing that something happened and there was there was people fighting but it focuses mostly on this Illuminati like um, society and in some ways it was a bit like the books of Jacob you follow like the different main personalities of this order and how they developed and like the relationship with other people in the future as well. It was very weird. Um, I think I liked it. I think the writing in a sentence level was good, but I, I was just I was just marked with it. Like I didn't I didn't know where it was going or what to expect. It was it was a complete ride. So yeah, um, be aware that if you are wanting to read this book, it's it's going to be a ride. It's not a straightforward book. Then for Montenegro, I read Catherine the Great and the Small by Olga Aktenevevich. Um, and this was, again, it was again about this period of war. Um, and it's divided into two halves. So the first half, we follow Catherine uh, when he, she was young and that's when like the main um, history happened and then the second half is in the modern day and we see her as an adult and how she ended up with and she had a lot of traumatic experiences in her past uh, um, apart from the war there was uh, some personal things that happened as well she had a very close relationship with this other girl they grew up together and uh, that girl was depressed and ended up killing herself so that affected her in, in some ways and a lot of um, a lot of trauma from her past um, and <laughs> For me, I mean, I do understand what the book was going and it does show some insights into intergenerational trauma and um, how personal mess up people kind of pass that sometimes along to their children. Um, but overall, for me, it felt a little bit like... Um, messed up 20 somethings uh, that do drugs and drink and then mess up their lives that was kind of the vibe uh, of a lot of it i like the history parts about um yeah how because obviously in these books um it's uh, it goes through what each of these countries went through in the war and it was very interesting to read this close together so that I saw the different perspectives to the war and to the conflict and the issues with ethnicity in, in that area. 
and this added to that and I'm glad that I actually am I think even though a, a lot of this felt kind of a bit the same it was always a little bit different in the perspective so I'm glad that I read all of this kind of around the same time in the past two three months I have read a lot of this one so I I think that added to my perspective on on things and I'm glad that I read this but uh, yeah it's the personal so like I, I enjoyed the, the context but I didn't enjoy the characters and the story of the characters as much um, so yeah that was a bit of a disappointment but it was okay so still not a bad book just um, in the personal part of things I just didn't connect with it as much and then the last uh, book that I wanted to talk to you about today is um, For North Macedonia and that was To the Lake by Kapka Kasanova and again this one I uh, the, the author is from New Zealand and her parents uh, were from Bulgaria and her grandparents were from North Macedonia so um, this is kind of a memoir of the author going back to going back to North Macedonia where the roots of her family were and um, because the her family fled from North Macedonia because they were being um, persecuted and then they went to Bulgaria and then they were persecuted in Bulgaria so they went to North uh, to New Zealand um, but she still feels very much like her roots are in North Macedonia and when she visits North Macedonia um, a lot of people there still know her family and they consider her like oh you're my family because your grandmother was my cousin or something um, so she still feels much part of, of that culture in, in some ways um, and yeah I mean <coughs> So I know that not everybody counts these kind of narratives in in their Read Around the World project, but I'm counting it because um, it's not easy to get normal study books translated, and this was one that I had access to. And I think that because I already have a fair amount of perspectives from people from countries in the area that have a very similar history I think it's okay to have one book that is from a perspective of someone coming back to their homeland um, so yeah that's uh, that's the thing um, and also I mean this was really good as well the um, it gave a lot of context on the cultural aspects and uh, coming from outside you you notice the cultural things more like as I said like the way that people consider you your family if you are connected in any way things like that maybe people from inside they're so used to it that they think that's just normal but when you come from outside you're like oh this is this is something that these people do that I'm not used to so it was nice to see some of those cultural elements as well from a bit of a more removed perspective and also I like that she also describes the nature a lot uh, North Macedonia has these very big two lakes that are in the border with Albania and that's where her family is from so that's where she goes and she describes the nature a lot which is also very nice um, and also I like that she describes a lot about the connection of the of the surrounding nations so apparently North Macedonia has a lot of history with Albania um, and she explores that a lot also with Greece although not so much and with Bulgaria I guess also because her family flew there at some point so yeah I, I think it gives a good um, show of the history of the area and how things were sort of organized and sort of like how the people lived in this in this area so yeah uh, I mean I liked it I think it's a little bit different from the rest but I liked it uh, as well um, so yeah I think it was a very successful 
section of the world for me. Um, I think I'm not sure if I want to like read a lot of these books again um, at the same time because yeah, they they all have very similar themes. But I think that reading them together now uh, gave me more perspective on things, and I I enjoyed them most most of them I enjoyed, and I think that in general the writing styles I gel with very well so maybe it's something I have to explore more let me know if you have read any of these books if you have read any other books from this area and until next video bye